In this video, we're gonna be talking about the 2020 Ford Expedition. This is the King Ranch 4x2, not the max, so it's the regular size. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, first off, thank you. If not, thank you for checking out the video. And if you're interested, please do subscribe to the channel. But if you are subscribed and you've seen our other videos, you'll know that I've actually already reviewed two of these things. One of them, the King Ranch Max 4x4, and one of them, the non-max Platinum 4x2. So this is the King Ranch non-max 4x2, very similar to what we've already reviewed, but we're gonna jump in and show you all the details with this one. So if you're interested to go back and check out those, please do, but let's just get into it. All right, and really quickly, let's first touch on the different trim levels that you can get. Now, I already talked about the King Ranch, which we have, and the Platinum, which is the top of the line, but you can also get an XLT, which is the bottom of the line, and a Limited, which is right in between the XLT and the King Ranch. Now, I love the Platinum interior. I really like the King Ranch interior in here. Actually, one of my favorite interiors of all King Ranch is in this thing, but quite honestly, as a family man, I definitely would not get the King Ranch or Platinum, the Limited, or even the XLT have really great interiors as well. I really wish Ford would send me one of those to review, but uh, we're always pretty much stuck with the high-end trims because that's what people want to see. With that, let's take a look at the exterior. Let's see what uh, nice features are on here for the King Ranch. Let's talk a little bit about the overall size, and then we're going to take a look at the cargo space. We're going to look under the hood and check out the engine. Then we'll move into the interior. We'll take it for a drive. We'll talk about the price and competition, and then we'll wrap this video up. All of that will be down in the description under some time cards. So if you just wanna jump ahead, feel free. But let's keep this rolling. All right, let's start with the exterior, looking at the overall size of this vehicle. It is a really big SUV and really not much competes with the size of the Expedition. The only one that does is basically the Tahoe, the Yukon, the big SUVs from GM. But this Expedition really sits nice in its size. It looks good overall with its dimensions and its body lines. And it's not just about the looks on the exterior. When you're sitting in it, it feels really big and nice looking out over the hood. You do feel like you're in a truck driving a truck, which it's built on the truck platform. So that's no big surprise there. We do have the LED headlamps here with signature LED lighting. We have LED fog lamps. We have the King Ranch front grille with that stone gray mesh. Looks really good and distinguishes itself from all the other trims. And overall, that full front end looks big, aggressive. Nice use of chrome without being too excessive there. And you get that nice two-tone color that really helps break up the design. Overall, I really like it, but let's go over and look at the side of this vehicle. So first off, those mirror caps are not body colored. They're actually that stone gray, the same as in the front end. Your door handles here are body colored, but with that satin aluminum trim on them. And of course, it's the keyless entry and keyless lock with just a grab of the handle and a touch of the button. So again, just walking up to the car and grabbing it will unlock it. Pushing the button here will lock it. Those mirrors are power folding, very nice. But as you unlock it and open up the door, you also get the power folding sidestep, which is great for jumping up into this vehicle. And having it fold up means that it's not constantly out there messing with your ground clearance or parking or anything else, which is great for the King Ranch. Next up are the wheels, and these are 22 inch wheels. They are painted machine faced aluminum wheels, and you get that King Ranch logo in the center cap. And before we move away from the side profile here, let's talk about another great feature from Ford, and that's the capless fuel filter. So you can just pop this thing open and in there, you don't have to take a cap off. You just stick the nozzle in and go. Obviously not a huge deal, but a little bit of a convenience and definitely nice to have. 
Next up around the rear of the vehicle are LED tail lights. You also get that full aluminum trimming that goes across the back with Expedition stamped in there. That lower trim piece is the same color as in the front on the grill and the lower dam there and on those mirror caps. You can also see you don't get any aggressive sport exhaust or anything. It's just a pretty well hidden exhaust in this vehicle. It's not supposed to be a sporty vehicle or anything, so that's just fine. And the last thing to touch on are the plethora of King Ranch badges. And the last piece of the puzzle here with the exterior is the exterior color. It is star white metallic tri-coat and definitely one of my favorite colors. I always say that I really enjoy white vehicles. I like the way that the color accentuates the body lines. I'm not a huge fan of the chrome, so I could do without the chrome and the polished aluminum wheels. I think white with black accents looks the best, but on this vehicle, it definitely looks premium and looks really good with that white paint coat. All right, and with that wrapped up, let's talk about the hatch in the cargo area. Now this is a nice big hatch. The loading, the loading height is not too high but you do get a pretty decent amount of space in here. And when I say pretty decent amount of space, you're looking at 20.9 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row. Now that might sound a little bit deceiving. 20.9 is actually a really good number, but when you have those third row seats folded up on this non-max, it doesn't actually give you a ton of usable space. So as you can see, I got a bunch of camera equipment and different stuff in here, and I had to fold that third row down to be able to fit it in comfortably where it's not all falling out whenever we open up the hatch. If you're talking about the max, you get 37.8, almost double the amount of space. And that is a great amount of space, especially for large families, because if you're traveling and you've got kids in every single seat and you still need room for luggage or equipment or anything in the rear, you're gonna have plenty of room to pack all that stuff. But in this one, the non-max, if you've got kids in every seat, you don't really get a ton of space behind that third row. With that third row folded down, we get 63.6 .6 cubic feet of cargo space. That's a lot of space to pack pretty much anything you want. And overall, you have 104.6 cubic feet of cargo space if you fold everything down, and that's in the non-max. If you do have the max, you're looking at 121 cubic feet of full cargo space. That's pretty impressive. And you do have power folding third row seats. So with just a touch of a button, you can raise them or lower them. Of course, I got it filled up right now, so we're not gonna raise them up. You can also drop those second rows with just a touch of a button. And that's just kind of a manual drop. So to lift them back up, you have to go manually lift them back up. But in a pinch when you need that extra room and you don't want to be fiddling with opening the doors and getting in and dropping those seats the little drop button here really nice and of course you have left and right so you can individually pick which one you want to drop when you have the captain's chairs there and closing the rear hatch is a matter of pushing a button right here and it will power close All right, and it should be no surprise what is under the hood here. You get a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, 375 horsepower, 470 foot pounds of torque. And in this one, the four by two non-max, when you hit that gas pedal, it really gets up and goes. And the family doesn't like it when I romp on it, but sometimes it's so much fun in this big vehicle just to step on that gas pedal that I do it anyways. Now I do wish they still offered the V8 in the Expedition, even if it was the EcoBoost being the premium and the V8 being the base engine like they do on some of the trucks. But I do understand that this thing has the power of the V8 with the efficiency of the six cylinder. So you can't really complain too much there. It would just be nice to have options. Now this is matched up with the 10 speed select shift automatic transmission which I've had no issues with in any of the trim levels that I've had. And you can get best in class towing at 9,300 pounds when equipped with the heavy duty towing and trailer package. And your EPA numbers are 17 city, 24 highway with a combination of 20 miles per gallon. 
And of course, we'll look a little bit closer into that as we drive it. So let's stop talking about the engine here. Let's get into the rear seats, quickly touch on those, jump in the front, talk about the rest of the interior, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, and rear seat wise, it's very spacious. We are in the middle row. Obviously you got the third row back there. So let's climb all the way to the back really quickly and talk about the rear seats. Now, as far as third rows go in three row vehicles, this thing has a ton of space. I do have plenty of room for my knees, for my feet. It's a little bit tight, but this seat is pushed back all the way. I could scoot it up a bit and get a bit more room back here but the kids have no issues at all. And you do have buttons back here to lean the seats back a bit or raise them back up. You have a quick handle right here for pushing this seat up. But the easiest way to get in and out is through this center gap here. As far as tech goes, you do have two USB ports back here, one on either side. So the kids with their tech will have no issues being back here. Let's move back into the second row, talk about these seats here, and then we'll move into the driver's seat. All right, and again, back here, a ton of room. I'm 6'1", kind of wide, but I fit in these seats perfectly. Again, this is pushed back all the way, but it is adjustable, so you can push it up or back. But it gives these second row passengers a ton of space and you get a lot of amenities being back here. So you do get your own AC controls back here. You get two USB ports hidden here and a full 110 watt power plug right here. You also get the two cup holders right here. And overall, these are really nice seats and just a nice place to be. But with that, let's jump out, move into the front, kick the uh, car on, get some airflow going on in here. Talk about all the tech and luxury up there, then we'll take it for a drive. All right, and your interior in here is called Ebony Del Rio. These are the King Ranch leather seats, King Ranch logos stitched into the seats, stitched into the armrest, really nice materials all throughout this cabin here. The seats are heated and ventilated. Big thumbs up there. I've definitely needed the heated seats throughout this last week, and I definitely used the cooled seats the last time we had the King Ranch when we were driving in 100 plus degree weather. Again, a lot of this interior I've already touched on a few times, and it's the same basic interior that you get in a lot of the F-150s and F-250s. So I'm gonna skimp over a lot of it here and we're gonna get to driving pretty soon, but I'll give you a quick look around here. And some really quick features here are the AC controls. You've got wireless charging down there. You've got USB type A and USB type C. You have the rotary dial shift knob here for shifting gears. You have drive modes here. You have park control and park sensors. Push button start over here. Right here is a little coin slot, which I find pretty useless. But if you have the 4x4, this is where your 4x4 controls go. And let's talk really quickly about that screen. And this is your Sync 3 system. It's an 8-inch touchscreen display. Nothing too fancy, nothing too big. Basically the same that you get in all the other Ford vehicles here. It's intuitive, it's quick and responsive, so I don't have any huge issues there. There are a few things that you can get to that you have to dig into the menus a little bit deep. But for most of those things, there are also redundant buttons. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great. And you have a nice 360 camera with reverse camera with guidelines. 360 camera in this big SUV is basically a must for most people. I definitely take advantage of it a lot when parking. But let's move to the steering wheel and the driver's information display. The steering wheel here gets a lot of great controls. You got your volume for your stereo with changing tracks. You get all your buttons for controlling your driver information display, all of your cruise control settings here, and a lot of your touch to talk features here. It's probably personal preference and a little bit of a nitpick, but I hate that the volume rockers are on this side and not this side. I always reach for this side first. I don't know if that's because that's where it is in other vehicles that I'm used to, 
but I always find myself using this hand to control a lot of stuff. So even whenever I do turn up the volume or turn down the volume, I feel myself reaching with this hand to do so. I would prefer them over here, they're over here, not a huge deal. Again, just a nitpick that I have. Let's look at that driver info display. All right, and this is an eight inch display. Very bright, easy to see. Lots of great information that you can get here. You can change this display to show basically what you want. You've got a lot of towing features here. You've got some off-roading features here, a little bit of settings there. But for the most part, I just keep it on the uh, general trip information. This shows you like your miles to the gallon and distance to empty. For the most part, that's what I'm interested in when I'm driving. Of course, you do have drive modes. So you have a sport mode, an eco mode, a normal mode, snow and wet mode, tow haul mode, and back to that sport mode. All right, and now let's take this thing for a drive. My favorite thing about driving this vehicle is its size. It's a great size of a vehicle, especially for families. But if you're used to driving trucks or bigger vehicles, this thing feels like you're driving a truck, not really a SUV, which of course it's based on a truck platform. So of course it does. Like I mentioned that 375 horsepower, 470 foot pounds of torque really makes this thing come alive. We're in sport mode now. The exhaust sounds pretty good, but you don't need really loud or aggressive exhaust in this. What you need is when you put your foot down, this thing gets up and goes. And that's definitely something that this expedition does. Now, by no means does it rival stuff like the SRT Durango or even probably the RT Durango in speed or sound, but it is an even bigger vehicle than that and it gets up and goes really well. Fuel economy wise, we already went over the fuel economy numbers and uh, the average combined should be around 20 miles per gallon. We're averaging 17.8, but we do let this thing idle a lot when we do uh, B-roll shots of it or photos of it. I also harp on it a lot more during the reviews than I would just in day-to-day -day life. So I have no doubt it'll hit that 20 miles per gallon average, but in our full week of this, we are averaging 17.8. Again, that driver's information display is really nice, nice and big, shows you everything that you need to know with a glance down. I would love for this thing to have a heads up display, a nice big colorful heads up display so you never have to take your eyes off the road. But Ford really doesn't do HUDs, so understandable. But if they were to put it in any vehicle, I would love it to be in this one. And as far as day-to-day -day driving with the tech and everything, everything's easy to touch, everything is easy to figure out, especially after you have it for a few weeks and you're used to doing all the controls. And if you've been in any Ford in the last couple of years, there's not a ton that changes and there's not a ton of complexity there. So I have no real issues there. You do have that B&O sound system. So if you wanna crank up the stereo with the kids in, that's always fun unless you're playing their music. But if you're playing your own and forcing them to listen to it, that's always fun. I do like the King Ranch in the 4x4. I almost assumed that the King Ranch was only in 4x4. Obviously it's not, this is a 4x2. If I was buying a King Ranch, I would probably want it to be the 4x4, but buying any other trim, I'm obviously okay with the 2x4. There's not a ton that you need on a day-to-day, -day, especially with a big vehicle like this, doing some serious off-roading. And because of the ground clearance and everything, you can do some light off-roading in this just fine, even in the 4x2. But if you do own a ranch or you do go out off-road a little bit, having that uh, peace of mind of the 4x4 is definitely always nice and it works really well in the Expedition. You also do get Ford's Co-Pilot 360 with pre-collision assist, automatic emergency braking, blind spot info system with cross traffic alert, auto high beam headlamps, lane keeping assist, and a rear view 360 camera. All of that technology is really great for day-to-day -day life. The lane keeping assist basically is just a, a warning and kind of nudges you back and forth. It's not as sophisticated as Nissan's Pro Pilot, which will actually keep you in the lane or a lot of the other systems there, but it works out decently well. The first couple of days of having this vehicle, it was raining horrendously. 
and the automatic windshield wipers. I hate automatic windshield wipers. One of the things that constantly makes me think that AI driving cars is so far off is because auto high beams and auto windshield wipers are such a pain in the butt as technology goes in vehicles. And if you can't get windshield wipers or high beams to work correctly, then how are you gonna get this thing to drive correctly? But again, that's kind of a nitpick and my perspective there. But overall, I love this thing, love driving it, love being behind the wheel. But let's talk about something that I don't love. Let's pull over, let's go talk about the price and the competition, and we'll start wrapping this video up. All right, guys, so let's talk about the price here. We're gonna go over the prices of the other ones that I've driven before. We're gonna talk about some base prices and we're talking about the price of this one specifically. So you can get a base XLT Expedition for $52,810. The King Ranch base, the non-max, is just under $73,000. The max that we drove that was packed out with pretty much everything that this is was just under $82,000. That Platinum that we drove that was packed out with a lot of options as well, but not the Max, and obviously the 4x2 was just under $76,000. So that Platinum was cheaper than the King Ranch Max that we drove. And then of course this one, this is the King Ranch, not the Max, 4x2, and this one is just under $75,000 which is a good price compared to everything else that I've driven. But again, that limited trim still has a nice interior or even the XLT pushed up with a lot of the technology that you get would have a much more reasonable price for large families. And I know I already mentioned the real only competition that you have for the Expedition are the GM vehicles, the Yukon, the Tahoe, the Suburban, and all of those are basically the same kind of price. You get basically the same kind of tech. Now, I haven't driven the newest generation of all of those. I'm really excited to get to. Hopefully, I will soon, even though they've been out for about a year now. But what I'm doing, I'm really curious on how they feel and drive compared to this. If I'm comparing it to the older ones, I definitely would take this, and I really love that Yukon Denali as well. But uh, this definitely feels like a little bit more of a confident vehicle. I like the steering in this. I like the acceleration in this. You get nice tech in here, but I know you get nice tech in those as well. But when it comes down to it, I'm a little bit more of a Ford guy than I am a GM guy, so bias does play a role in that. So take that for what you will. But overall, there's not really much else that competes with this in size and uh, the class that this thing's in. So let's jump back out of the vehicle, give you some of my final thoughts, and we'll wrap the video up. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on this video. First of all, the Expedition is definitely one of my favorite family SUVs that you can buy. I love every time that I get it. That's why I never complain that this is my third one to drive and review. Great for large families like mine. Absolutely love it. Love this color. Love the King Ranch. It is too expensive for me to justify buying for my family, but if I had the money, I would definitely buy it. With that, if I didn't cover something that you wanted to hear on this thing, go check out the other two Expedition reviews. I might have covered it on there. If I completely glossed over something that you constantly want to see during reviews, be sure to go check out our other channel, Texas Garage Newswire. We do news over there, but we also do quick look videos. So we give a quick look of the vehicle that we're driving for the week. And then we leave it up to you guys to leave comments and let us know what you want to see specifically on the vehicles that we're driving. And then if we answer your question on the review, we can give you a quick shout out there, but it's definitely a way for you to be more interactive with these full reviews. So again, if you're subscribed here and you want more input on the review, go check out our Texas Garage Newswire channel and subscribe over there. With that, I hope you did enjoy this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And as always guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>